Welcome back to the Bearface Safari guys. So the subject of today's video is the wild dog or Lycon Pintus, also known as the Painted Wolf. Now this is one of the park's lesser spotted predators. Now in the Kruger Park there's only about 120 of these guys. And uh, they are fascinating. Um, they live in a pack structure. And they practice cooperative breeding. Now what that means is only one pair in the pack will mate and have pups. And then the entire pack will assist in raising those pups. So that makes them very successful at raising their young. A couple of adaptations for that is the female that has the pups will stay behind when the rest go and hunt and look after the pups. Then, upon returning, the rest of them will regurgitate meat to feed her. So, now the question becomes, if they're so successful, they have a success rate of 80% when it comes to hunting, and they're so good at raising their young, why are they endangered? Well, two reasons. Number one, the way they hunt. Um... They are not very clean hunters, so they will basically run an animal into exhaustion and then start eating. So it looks bad. Fortunately, a pack of nine dogs can eat about 100 kilograms of meat in about 15 minutes, which means the animal actually does die very quickly, although it looks horrible. The other reason is with rhino poaching and with general poaching in the park, people are bringing in domestic dogs which carries the canine distemper virus. And canine distemper virus is deadly to these dogs. Um, it can wipe out an entire pack in about 20, 24 hours. So as amazing as they are, they do get um, a bad rep because of the way they hunt. Now, I've included a couple of clips just to show you guys how it actually happens. So, for the sensitive people out there, um, this is pretty much the point where you would not want to look any further. Just back to the the current situation of these dogs. So currently there's about 800 in Botswana, there's about 400 in Namibia, there's about 400 in South Africa, and about 600 in Zimbabwe. But in places like Botswana and Zimbabwe where the wild areas are not fenced, um, they do get picked off by the local stock farmers. Okay, so here you can see these guys feeding, and as you can see, their carcass is disappearing very, very quickly. Okay, now this is interesting. They've chased this animal. You can see this kudu is slowing down. And as she's slowing down, they're just starting to, to rip out pieces. And they'll eventually corner the animal in the water. And then it's pretty much over. And that animal will bleed out in no time at all. 
at this point you can see the animal is pretty much frozen. Shock has taken over. And in this clip they cornered the animal on the fence. So there is one going for the throat. But the real effectiveness is caused by the bleeding of the others ripping the hindquarters apart. And you can see in this clip as well, long before the animal suffocates, the shock kicks in and the animal is dead. So it's not as prolonged a suffering as you would imagine. But in the past people didn't understand that, so they saw them as brutal and evil and just shot them on sight. There we go guys, hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.